All right, guys, on this video, um, we're still going to add and subtract radicals, but what's going to happen now, we're going to work with radicals that aren't the same, meaning you don't have the same number in the square root, and it's not simplified. The square root's not simplified. The first three was pretty easy. You just identified the like radicals and just added. Really wasn't a whole lot of math involved. Okay, as you can see, I'm just going to do the next three, four, five, and six. Seven and eight we'll probably do in class, but it's the same concept of four, five, and six. And if you look at these three, four, five, and six, you can see you can't add them right away. You have different numbers in the square root. Um, so if I look at four, this four root three, I know square root of three I can't simplify. This square root of 27, I can simplify that though. There's a perfect square that goes into 27. So I'm just going to bring down the four root three. The square root of 27, nine is a perfect square that goes into it. So I can split this up to square root of 9 times the square root of 3. So again, I'll bring down the 4 root 3. And then square root of 9 right there, that's 3. And then I just bring down the root 3. So now, after I simplified one of the radicals, now I have like radicals. So I have square root of 3 in each, so I can combine 4 minus this 3 is 1. So you just get 1 root 3. That's the same thing as saying the square root of 3. So in the beginning for 4, it looks like you can't do anything. You can't combine it. But what was key is this square root of 27 was not simplified all the way. Okay, let's look at uh, number 5. Now number 5, if, let's look. We have square root of 8, square root of 2. Now well, square root of 2, you, you can't simplify that any further. Square root of 8, you can. Now this 2 kind of gives you a little bit of hint. Most likely you're probably going to end up with a root 2 for this root 8. If you look, the 2 goes into 8 4 times, and 4, that's our perfect square. So I can split root 8 up to root 4 times root 2. Okay, I'm just going to bring down this minus root 2. And then this square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 root 2 minus root 2. So after I simplified square root of 8, now I have like radicals. So 2 root 2 minus, this is like saying 1 root 2. So 2 minus this 1 is 1, so we get 1 root 2, which is the same thing as saying the square root of 2. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do 6. Now 6 is actually going to take us a little bit more work. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so we have more space. Square root of 54 and the square root of 24, both of them have perfect squares that go into it. So I can simplify both. So let's just take our time simplifying both. Eventually, we're going to get the same number in the square root, so we can add or subtract the radicals. All right, let's see here. I'm going to bring down the 4. And then 54, let's see, a perfect square that goes into it is 9. And it goes into it 6 times. Um, I'm just going to work with this. Then I'll work with the 2 root 24. So let's see here. This square root of 9 is 3. So we have 4 times 3 times the square root of 6. And then I can only multiply this. So 4 times 3 is 12, and we're left with 12 root 6. That square root of 6 can't simplify that any further. Okay, let's work with this second term, 2 root 24. So it's kind of a hint. This square root of 6, you're probably going to end up with a square root of 6 working with that square root of 24. Okay, let's bring the plus. Let's bring the 2 down. Let's see. The only perfect square that goes into 24 is 4. And how many times does it go into it? goes into it six times. So there, that's where we get the square root of six. All right, so I just bring down this two. This square root of four is just two, so it's two times two times root six. I can only multiply this, so two times two is four. So this gives us four root six. And there it is. After you simplified both radicals, you have the same number in the square root. So I can add this 12 and this four which gives me 16, and then I just leave the square root of 6. So you can see how number 6 definitely took a lot more work. Just take your time, and most likely for these, you're going to end up with the same number in the square root. So it kind of gives you a hint of what number you should get for the other square root after you work with the first square root.